Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Maria Vittoria Zanchettin, a third year PhD student at System. And today I will show you my results about agent driven winds and gaseous disk in a sample local cipher galaxies with a high resolution study of the multi phase interstellar medium with news on Man JBLA data. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, with, uh, what is the agent feeding and feedback? Uh, the agent feedback is uh, strongly necessary to explain the galaxy formation and evolution. And there are also very observational evidence of, very, of a very strong link between the supermassive black hole and the, its uh, host galaxies. The, one of the most important is the m sigma relation, so the relation between the supermassive black hole mass and the velocity dispersion of the bulge. So in this, uh, in this context, if we have the feeding, so the star formation process in which the gas is converted into stars. And then we have the AGM phase. So the gas accreted onto the su central supermassive black hole causing the AGM luminosity. And then we have the feedback. So the injection of uh, energy and momentum into the interstellar medium or the circle galaxy uh, medium through winds, shocks, or jets driven both by the AGM and by the supernova. And this uh, feedback can eat or remove the gas from the host. Um, in this context, uh, the radio jets and the agent driven winds can drive uh, multi phase outflows, so outflows in the different gas phase, from the neutral atomic to the ionized and core molecular uh, phases. And the gas can be removed, heated up, or disrupted, therefore influencing the star formation process or the of the galaxy host. In this context, uh, we can study the impact of the agent feedback uh, by studying the global, the global effects, so uh, study the integrated properties of the galaxy host and build scaling relations, or study the local effects, so the property, how the properties are locally modif uh, modified. In this context, uh, my work is focused on the IBISCO sample, the IBIS AGM CO survey. Uh, this uh, sample uh, is made by 47 AGN uh, addicts selected from the um, integral IBIS catalog from uh, Malizia et al. 2017. These objects are um, unbiased and gaze nuclear obscuration, have, uh, have uh, volumetric luminosities above 10 to the 43 arc per second, and accurate black hole masses, stellar masses, star formation rate, and accurate measure of the nuclear properties. From this sample, we drawn a, subs of, a subset of 15 objects with available around 30 meter ALMA, MUSE, and VLA radio data in order to perform a multiband uh, analysis of these objects in order to build a complete view of these uh, uh, cipher galaxies. In this presentation, I will show you my results about two peculiar objects drawn from the VSCO sample. Uh, which has uh, um, um, components in the ultrafrost outflow, so outflows um, detected in nuclear part of the galaxy. And uh, the first object is the local 1.5 cipher Markarian 509. This uh, cipher shows the presence of a ionized gas disk and a starburst ring. Um, seems to be immerged with, um, uh, with a gas-rich dwarf, and different studies highlight the presence of several outflow components, from the uh, ionized gas wind detected through O3 emission to the X-ray warm absorbers and UFO components. And in this, for this object, we analyze the ALMA band 6 data. Instead, for the nearby AGN and the C292, uh, this is a peculiar object, part of the interactive system ARP245, and it is uh, variable in the X-ray and so extended emission both in ARP and soft X-ray, and, and also several output components. For this object, we analyze the MUSE, VLA, and ALMA uh, data. First of all, Markarian 509. For this object, we analyze uh, ALMA 12 meter array data in band 6. Uh, which trace the CO221 and the 1.3 millimeter um, continuum at 200 parsec resolution. We found uh, the presence of a main disk inclined uh, 44 degrees plus a nuclear warped disk inclined with respect to the outer one, for which uh, we computed the dynamical mass and the molecular gas mass. We found also 
that there are um, regions uh, that are that are perturbed with respect uh, with uh, disc like kinematics, which we identified as a, a agent molecular wind. For the uh, more uh, nuclear one, we found that uh, this uh, region show um, a similar velocity uh, with respect to the ionized wind found by Liu et al. 2015. Therefore, we um, we suppose the presence of a multi-phase agent-driven winds at a radius of about 300 parsec. Comparing the energetic of this multi-phase wind and the energetic of the UFOs component, we found that this wind is consistent with a momentum concert wind or a radiation pressure dust, as shown by the plot on the right. Then we uh, analyzed the molecular disk stability, computing the tumor cum parameter. Uh, if this parameter is above a critical value that for the uh, gas is in between one and three, the gas is, uh, is uh, stable against the um, fragmentation. Here the images plot the uh, contours of the CO disk superimposed to the HST images that show the starburst ring. What we found is that uh, in this case, the disk is stable at nucleus and in the outflow region. Instead, it's only marginally stable at the starburst ring. For what concern the nearby C4 and GST 292, uh, we analyzed the VLA and radio emission. Uh, from the VLA data, we found the presence of, of a hot shape emission which is tracing a plasma bubble which are expanding into interstellar medium which are mostly um, inclined with respect to the galaxy disk. And the two regions uh, that you can see here uh, with the magenta circle, they are coincident with the uh, ALMA continuum emission, which is tracing the uh, dust disk seen almost a John. Uh, having both of these uh, uh, data, we were able to, uh, to build uh, the specially resolved smith kennicott relation, deriving the surface star formation rate and the surface density of molecular gas mass. Uh, we are planning to analyze all the Ibisco objects with available ALMA and VLA data in order to study this relation of, in a more um, wide sample. For work concern uh, CO2 to one emission, we analyze uh, three different data sets, uh, two from uh, ALMA 12 meter array at uh, two different resolutions, 0.2 and 0.6 arc second resolution, one from uh, ALMA 7 meter array at 7 arc second resolution. In this way, we were able to detect the, the clumpy gas with a 12 meter array data and the diffuse extended emission thanks to the ALMA 7 meter array. We have uh, also an accepted ALMA CVRMA proposal, which targets other eight Ibisco GNs in order to map the CO emission, uh, the diffuse CO emission filtered by the 12 meter range array in a region comparable to the MUSE uh, field of view. In NGC 292, what we found is that uh, both the molecular and the ionized gas trace um, an almost um, uh, edge-on disk with a similar uh, rotation velocity, but different velocity dispersion. The molecular gas show a lower velocity dispersion to the, with respect to the UNAS-1, but uh, thanks to the high angular resolution ALMA, we were able also to detect an uh, inner single nuclear ring, which uh, you can see here in the position velocity diagram, diagram cut along the um, kinematic major axis of the disk, which is, uh, uh, which is the mission is um, inside these uh, mag magenta circles. Uh, for what concern the uh, molecular outflows, we found uh, different regions uh, which are perturbed with respect to the disk-like kinematics. The first one is the uh, edge one, in which the gas is in outflow with velocity similar to the ionized gas phase, and the edge two, in which uh, uh, the kinematic is very complex due to the fact that in this region, there is the tail which connects uh, the uh, NGST-2992 to its uh, companion at NGST-2993, part of the system R245. We also detected the clumps of molecular gas outside the main disk, these are this region, 
and which are of uh, velocities up to 200 km per second are and are located um, uh, up to the research back to the disk, which is our gas uplifted by the agent driven wind. For what concern the ionized gas, uh, we detect, uh, we, we found that the O3 emission line traced a very complex kinematics. The ionized gas is uh, show blue and red wings uh, both in, uh, in all these regions. And this is, uh, um, and show also the presence of two very wide angle ionized cones. And we found evidence of a gas outflowing both on nucleus and on kiloparsec scales with velocities exceeding 1,000 km per second on the, in the nuclear region. Um, for what concerns the Ibisco sample, what we are want to do is to analyze the ALMA 7 meter ray data in order to map the CO emission in, and to obtain a reliable overview of the molecular gas distribution and kinematics on kiloparsec scale. And instead of what concerns the radio emission, we are analyzing VLA radio data available for the object in this sample. And what we have uh, found, this is something uh, ongoing, still ongoing, is that uh, there are, um, these objects show very different uh, morphology, as you can see here for this map, we show the uh, VLA radio emission. So uh, to conclude, uh, in this uh, presentation, I'll show you uh, my results about the two um, Seifert, Markarian 509 and uh, NGC2992, for which uh, a multi-phase uh, analysis was performed. Uh, what we found is that in these uh, objects, uh, there is an indication that the molecular outflow rate is significantly below the best fit correlation found for molecular winds by Fiore et al. 2017. In the graph, you found the uh, relation find from this work. And these are the um, plot for these two work and for, from uh, um, ESO uh, 428 from Ferruglio et al. 2020. And therefore, this uh, highlight the, necessary, um, the necessity of uh, analyzing the um, ALMA data of the whole Ibisco sample in order to understand if this uh, trend is something uh, that you can see also in other objects in this sample. And then I want to uh, highlight the importance of, uh, the, of a multi-wavelength analysis in a, an unbiased sample such as uh, is Wisco uh, by exploiting ALMA to millimeter, Muse VLT optical and VLA radio data. And then also to perform a multi-scale approach, uh, putting together the ALMA 12 meter ray and 7 meter ray data in order to recover the emission also on diffuse scale, which is not traced by the 12 meter array alone. And these are my conclusion and I uh, thank you for the attention.